my work in audio is, is, is no different than like painting a painting on a canvas, you know, it's like, what kind of picture do I want to paint that day? Um, and the, the equipment is just the paintbrush, the paintbrushes or the pencils or the charcoal or whatever you want to cut or the sculpture that I'm trying to meld it, you know, form into something that um, emotionally sort of translates a feeling to, some, to, to somebody, you know, to make them feel a certain way or experience a certain feeling. You know, when you look at a film, you take away the audio and it's, it's almost like the life is taken out of it. But if you sit in a theater, turn off the visuals and just play the audio, your mind will go wild. Like, your, your mind will create the visceral images of what you're hearing. I think sound is, that's what's so interesting about sound is that it's, uh, it's so powerful. It's, it, it's like one of the most engaging mediums I've ever worked with. I, I think it's just that I'm so addicted to it. Playing with sound, there's, I, I guess I get such a high out of just exploring sound and manipulating sound in ways and like, it, I, it just, maybe my brain is like fucked up or something, I don't know. I'm always switching things around in my studio. No, nothing's ever like, um, especially when it comes to modular stuff, I have these what I call floating cases that I float around the room and those cases, um, the modules aren't even like screwed in. They're just plugged in and then I unplug stuff and I'm like rearranging and um, trying out all kinds of different stuff all the time. So um, yeah, it's, it's all over the place really. It's just kind of whatever like I'm emotionally kind of feeling at that moment. You know, sometimes I'll just do something in the computer, I'm not working in the modular or working with the particular a piece of hardware. Um, sometimes I'm using software. Um, sometimes it's just a, a drum machine I'm using. Or it, um, uh, there really is no focus on one thing. It's just kind of wherever my brain wants to go. I was kind of given the task of we have the FMX engine. See what happens. Explore it and find all the weird, uh, you know, little weird, uh, you know, uh, sweet spots and strange things that you can discover with it. So I was kind of uh, went off on my own path to see what I could, see if I could find new sounds that wouldn't be your typical type of stuff. I found all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, uh, I used a. Um, an editor that they only allowed the programmers to use. So I was able to see everything that's in the infrastructure of the montage. The FMX engine was, was the most impressive, I would say, feature of montage. It was, um, I don't know how to, how to describe it. It was like pretty much my FM wet dream. Because <laughs> uh, I'd been a big fan of all the, uh, the early FM synthesizers that they'd created everything from like the DX7, you know, DX100, DX200. So I was really excited to see this technology kind of reincarnated in this new product. And since I've been uh, using a lot of the FM-based synthesizers in my music for so many years, I was um, intrigued by having basically, you know, an eight operator, but having eight channels and having, you know, hundreds of voices at my fingertips and then being able to automate everything and with a super knob or the motion sequences and being able to automate every single parameter very easily. Just trying to find um, and explore and create new sounds that I'd never heard before with FM synthesis. And I definitely got into some stuff that I had never heard before. Just by the nature of the automation because I never had a synth that you could, auto I mean, you could assign so many modulation routings to and the super knob. Uh, at first, which I didn't understand, and then after I started mapping things to it, I was just like, oh, this is a very interesting concept. It's like one knob can control hundreds of things, you know, hundreds of things, and just... I would get in, you know, and set up a couple voices, and then s start using the uh, super knob and just start assigning everything. You know what I mean? Just going down and just kind of seeing what would happen. I was like, wonder what would happen if I did this and then, then did this and then, then did this and then before you know it, I'd have like 20 or 30 assignments going. And then just by turning the knob, I could have things being inverted or doing, applying different like amplitude shapes on like filters and effects and uh, 
you could do so much, um, and what was great about it is doing things wrong. Like, I'm all about doing absolutely the most incorrect thing possible to come up with sounds like, like, why would you do that, right? Um, but, uh, so I would try to break it. It's just like, what's the max amount of things I could do? Let me use every single modulation mapping that I could. I would max out. So my presets like max out every single assignment. Pretty soon it's just like this self-regenerating system where you just kind of stand back and it's just doing its own thing. You know, it's almost like a modular <laughs> in a way. You, know, you set up a patch. I mean, you could you could get that deep with it, which I think it's not many synthesizers um, that I know that are out on the market that would that you could do that. Uh, I always, I've always looked at myself more as like a student still learning and exploring things. I feel like that never ends. Like I'm just never, I never stop learning. So I just say, you know, I'm a student for life. You know, so just stay in school. <laughs>